The European starling population is a major potential threat to the United States. They destroy crops, causing billions of dollars in damage and causing heavy environmental pollution. Forcing people to take extreme measures to deal with them. So how do American farmers cope with 200 million invasive European starlings? Here is a video. Please, subscribe to the channel to support us. European starlings, famous for their flocking behavior, often move in large groups, numbering up to thousands of birds. These migratory birds follow a seasonal pattern, heading south during the winter and returning north in the summer. It is easy to see flocks of European starlings flying in the sky, especially in spring European starling descend on the fields when crops begin to flower and bear fruit. It is possible that newly harvested fields are also their migration targets, while the birds' migratory habits are picturesque. The European starling pose a significant threat to the American farmlands. They eat flowers, fruits, and seeds of many different crops, leading to reduced productivity and affected product quality. Estimates suggest that European starling causes about $1 billion in animal damage to the U.S. agricultural industry. Not limited to field crops, European starlings also destroy orchards and fruit trees. Their insatiable appetite leads to reduced yields and reduced fruit quality. The fruit industry in the United States loses an estimated $100 million each year due to this invasive bird species. The impact of the European starling extends beyond rural areas, affecting urban landscapes and residential areas. Their tendency to form large flocks creates noise pollution and environmental disturbance. Furthermore, these birds pose a traffic hazard when they fly across the road, increasing the risk of incidents. They often gather on large trees on city streets at night, causing cars and motorbikes to get dirty and seriously affected by their waste. European starlings cause damage to approximately 2 million vehicles each year in the United States with damaged windshields, headlights, and paint. The average repair cost for a car damaged by European starlings is about $1,000. Lawns around people's houses are also often disrupted by flocks of European starlings. During the early morning or late afternoon, European starlings are most concentrated in the fields, creating a lively and captivating spectacle for nature lovers. Hunting European starlings during the day on open ground is an art and requires skill and patience. Hunters use hunting tools and combined with devices that emit the sounds of European starlings to attract them closer.
the talented hunter desperately positions himself among foliage or trees, waiting with exceptional patience as flocks of European starlings flies closer. When the right moment comes, the hunter takes aim and uses technique to take down each and every one of them. They are not normal individuals, but they're passionate artisans who understands the biology and the behavior of this bird. European starling hunting has been strictly regulated by the United States government since 1958. These regulations not only requires hunters to have a valid license, but also requires them to comply with all rules safely. Particular attention is given to use of smaller caliber bullets in order to minimize the impact on other bird species and maintain balance in the ecosystem. To achieve optimal efficiency in hunting, hunters need to be carefully choosing a suitable hiding location. The location chosen must not only be close enough for them to carry out the kill but also far enough to avoid being detected by the cunning birds. During hunting, the hunter can catch about 50 to 100 European starling per day, depending on their personal technique and experience, respecting and complying with hunting regulations is not only a legal obligation, but also a guarantee for the sustainability of European starling populations. This is an important role to maintain the natural balance and protect the bird's habitat, as well as preserving the responsibility of the hunting tradition. Hunting European starlings at night can be more effective than daytime pursuits. These birds often seek refuge and rest in the nooks and crannies of the farm buildings at night, making them more vulnerable to predation than during daytime movement and foraging activities. Night hunting of European starling is often done using spotlights to illuminate farm structures. When these birds are suddenly exposed to light, they become startled, making them easier targets for hunters. According to a research that was published in the Journal of Wildlife Management, about 50% more European starlings are hunted at night than during the day. Several factors contributing to the ease of night hunting for European starlings. First, these birds are often less vigilant at night because they are less concerned about natural predators. Second, European starlings tend to fly more slowly at night, making them easier targets for the hunters. However, night hunting can contribute to noise pollution and have negative impacts on the surrounding environment. While the effectiveness of night hunting for European starlings is clear, it is important for hunters to prioritize safety and minimize potential environment impacts. Responsible hunting practices along with an awareness of the risks involved, can ensure a balance between effective wildlife management and ethical considerations in pursuing Starling's European rocks at night.
How are invasive bird species being dealt with by farmers today? Let's continue watching the rest of the video. Wild pigs in the United States are not only an invasive species, but also a major source of damage to the agriculture, livestock, and the natural environment. The consequences they bring can reduce agricultural productivity, pose a risk of disease transmission to the livestock, and affect the entire ecosystem. In crop farms, wild boars become annoying rivals of farmers because of their toxic gnawing behavior. They destroy crops, eat seeds, tubers, and fruits, causing heavy damage to agricultural production. This not only reduces farmers' income, but also affects the food supply. Furthermore, wild boars also cause soil erosion, damage irrigation systems, causing soil erosion and reduce soil quality. This greatly affects the stability of the agricultural environment, reducing the ability of soil to regenerate for crops. This animal has omnivorous habits and can consume many different types of food, from plants such as plant seeds, other tubers, fruits, to small animals such as insects, and mice. Wild boars use their snouts and feed to dig in the ground, search for food, and sometimes scrape the ground to create a shelter. On livestock farms, Wild boars attack the livestock, eating their food and drinking water. This is not only affecting the health and condition of pits, but also increases the risk of infection with dangerous infectious diseases. Wild boars are active mainly at night. When it's dark and few people are active, this increases the likelihood of encountering them especially in rural areas and primary forests. The greatest threat not only comes from the attack and corrosion that wild boars carry, but also from their ability to be a source of disease transmission. The wild boars can carry many dangerous infectious diseases such as African swine fever, swine tuberculosis, swine fever, and foot and mouth disease. These diseases not only threaten the health of pets, but can also spread to humans, endangering the entire community. Hunting feral hogs by planes in the United States is an effective strategy for controlling and preventing invasive species. Implemented since the 1980s, this method has become increasingly popular and widely used in recent years. The cost of hunting by plane is not small, ranging from $1,500 to $5,000 per flight. However, this cost includes not only the rental of the plane, but also the cost of hiring hunters, the cost of ammunition, and many other costs. Hunting by planes offers many important advantages. First of all, this method is highly effective 
capable of destroying a large number of wild boars in a short time. This helps minimizing their impact on the environment and also protects farmers from damage caused by invasive species. In particular, the use of aircraft and hunting also ensures safety for people and pets. By flying at a high altitude, the aircraft avoids wild boar attacks, reduces the risk of accidents, and at the same time, increases the accuracy in placing bullets. When conducting aerial hunting in the United States, obtaining a license is important to ensure safety and regulatory compliance. These licenses include wild boars hunting licenses, pilot licenses, and hunting equipment licenses. A wild boar hunting license is one of the most important steps to ensure that hunting takes place according to regulations. This requires a solid understanding of hunting rules, as well as the ability to identify wild boars and manage the hunting environment. A pilot license is a necessary condition to ensure that the operator has the ability to control the aircraft safely and accurately. This is important to avoid unwanted accidents during hunting and ensures the safety of both the pilot and those participating in the activity. A hunting license is another essential factor especially when using firearms from an aircraft. This ensures that the operator has the skills to use hunting equipment correctly and safely, while complying with relevant legal regulations. Crop fields and orchards are often the primary foraging areas for feral pigs, making them easy to access and control. Airplanes make this more convenient, increasing the ability to locate and hunt them. Jungle areas, where wild boars often hide as well, are also a prime target for aerial hunting. The aircraft's flexibility in locating and accessing hard-to-reach areas helps improve the effectiveness of hunting activities. Thanks to the control measures, including aerial hunting, the wild boar population in the United States has decreased significantly by 2023. The population is estimated to have decreased from 5 million in 2000 to about 2.5 million. Despite significant achievements, wild boars continue to threaten the environment and pose a risk to people. Maintaining and developing control measures is important to ensure a balance between the survival of this animal and the protection of her habitat. Therefore, controlling and preventing wild boars' invasion remains an issue that requires continuous attention and action. How do you feel about this measure? Please, let us know all your opinions and thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. And for now, allow me to invite you to continue watching the rest of the video. Let's continue watching together. According to Agricultural Statistics, AAFC, Coyotes were responsible for 60.5% of the 
of the 140,000 livestock predated in Canada in 2023. Total number of livestock predated in 2023, accounting for 1.7% of all livestock in Canada. According to the AAFC report, the total number of adult and young cattle in Canada was 8.2 million and 12.6 million. As of July 1, 2024, they often attack livestock at night when cattle are resting and sleeping. The Canadian government has taken its most extreme measure to deal with the coyote population. Night hunting takes place. Hunting coyotes at night has become a fairly simple countermeasure. Government hunters and farmers have used diffused lighting systems to track coyotes. Use remote hunting tools to limit noise while moving. Let's follow the process of harvesting coyotes at night. They choose a convenient location to have an overall view of the free-range cow farm. In this position, the rate of shooting them at critical points is very high. When coyotes appear, observe and monitor them carefully because even the slightest mistake can endanger livestock on the farm. In addition to needing a unique hunting license, skill is very important. They would take down one coyote at a time. On average, each person can hunt about 2 to 10 animals in a night of hunting. In addition to coyotes, black bears are also a species being dealt with. They often attack chicken farms at night, especially in areas near forests. Their frequent appearance has caused a lot of worry for people. The black bear population in Canada currently numbers about 250,000 animals. Black bear populations are unevenly distributed, concentrated in heavily forested areas in eastern and western Canada. Black bear hunting is a popular activity in Canada to deal with this population. This becomes more difficult and interesting when hunting at night. When the darkness covers the forest, some bears will go looking for food. At this time, it is easy to see them. Bear hunting is quite a dangerous activity, so it is important to have teammates with you. Using hunting tools, such as bows and arrows, larger sized hunting tools can also easily defeat the target. When detecting a target, you need to stay calm and do not make any noise because they are very sensitive, because they could easily attack you if they felt any certain level of danger. You 
should aim for stunning points on the bear's body, such as the chest to shorten their paralysis time using bows and arrows to shoot bears is the most widely used method because of its operational features. After the bear is pinned by the arrow, just follow the trail and harvest. Canada's fox population currently numbers about 10 million. Fox populations are unevenly distributed, concentrated in urban and rural areas. Foxes often attack livestock at night when the livestock are sleeping. They often attack small livestock such as chickens, sheep, Fox attacks can cause significant damage to farms. So the best thing to deal with this population? The government has introduced fox hunting methods. At night is the time when they forage a lot. Hunting at this time has many advantages. Just go to the field areas near farms to hunt them. These areas often smell like livestock, attracting many foxes. Canadian hunters often use radiator lights to observe and search for them. Because the fox body is quite small and they often attack from behind, a teammate is needed to ensure the hunter's safety. When detecting fox attacks, you need to stay quiet to observe. Each time, the hunter can shoot down one animal. This fox species is very agile and requires a lot of practice before participating in the hunting process of this species. Using different types of hunting tools will yield different results. Accuracy and speed each time will depend on the features and capacity of each type. During a night of fox hunting, each hunter can harvest from 5 to 20 foxes, depending on their skills, experience, and the type of equipment they're using. These numbers are the average, and may actually fluctuate depending on weather conditions, terrain, and the presence of foxes in the hunting area. According to estimates, only about 3 to 2 percent of fox populations declined a fraction over the course of a year due to hunting. This raises questions about the sustainability of fox hunting and requires strict management to ensure a balance between hunting and conservation of wildlife populations. In addition, there are many other wild species with populations distributed throughout Canada. They are also dealt with by hunting. However, this also needs to be carefully managed to ensure that it does not cause negative impacts on the environment or biodiversity. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, 
Please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.